Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll explore Luyang which is a new major city coming in the next episode of Ragnarok Mobile. We'll dive into the rich history of this region and the new high-level monsters lurking in the surrounding maps. We will also take a look at all the materials, equipment, cards, and headwear blueprints that these new monsters drop. Do take note that there is no official announcement yet on when this episode will be released in the sea and global servers. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. Let's start our journey to the city of Luyang. Coming from Umbala, just enter the portal at the center of the map. You'll then be transported directly to Luyang. The Dragon City of Luyang was designed after ancient China. It features a mountainous landscape surrounded with red maple trees. A huge deep lake lies in the central part of the city which is said to bring prosperity to the people. However, there are dangerous monsters hidden at the bottom of the lake. Entering the southmost portal brings us to Flower Street where the grandiose Lantern Festival is held. Residents of Luyang gather here to release lanterns to the vast starry night sky. Lotus lanterns are also floating on the river and drifting towards an endless future. There are tons of new quests that will be available in this region. Starting in Frontera, the main quest will be open to all adventurers of base level 100. There will also be side quests such as Abnormal Mission and Singer Master Box missions. Completing the Singer Master Box missions will not only unlock Luyang's unique headwares, but will also give reputation needed to unlock new furnitures. There will also be new equipment available for crafting after completing Luyang quests. Bloody Iron Ball is a new physical attack accessory that inflicts the cripple effect on an enemy, which slows down their movement speed. At plus 12 refinement, the target's movement speed will be reduced by 50% for 3 seconds. Another one is Occult Incense, which is a new magic attack accessory that gives a chance to deal critical strike when casting magic skills, causing 150% spell crit damage and an extra 1% spell crit damage for every 6 points of luck. Now let's explore the new farming maps in this region. First up, we have Sunset Shoal which can be accessed from Flower Street by entering the West Portal. It was the most prosperous market in the past but now it has been filled with wild monsters. It also features a beautiful scenery of the setting sun. For the first monster, we have the level 143 Lantern Merfolk, which is of water element, brute race, and small size. The usual material drops are dry sand and mystic frozen. Its card is a foot gear card which gives plus 200 max HP and plus 3% range of physical damage reduction. As for the header blueprint it drops, we have the Fish Spirit Lighthead item which grants an additional 10% damage to fish race and 10% reduction in damage taken from plant race. Unlocking this headwear gives plus 3 magic attack. Next, we have the level 148 Mage Weaver, which is of Ghost Element, Demon Race, and Medium Size. The usual material drops are Fantasy Flower and Rough Oridicon. Its card is a weapon card which gives plus 5 Agi, plus 5 Strength, plus 5% Movement Speed, plus 5% Attack Speed, and plus 5% crit damage. Notably, it has a plus 3 attack unlock reward. As for the headwear blueprint it drops, we have the Mage Weaver Mask Face item, which grants plus 20 magic attack and 2% M pen. Unlocking this headwear gives plus 3 attack. Next, we have the level 153 Panda Pouring, which is of neutral element, plant race, and medium size. The usual material drops are Earth Crystal and Candy. Its card is a Garment card which gives plus 5 attack, plus 10% damage to Earth Element monsters, and plus 20 crit to Brute and Plant Race monsters. Notably, it has a plus 8 magic attack on Lock Reward. As for the Headwear Blueprint it drops, we have the Panda Whisper Head item which grants plus 20 death and plus 3% Demi-Human damage reduction. Additionally, there are two boss monsters that you'll find here. For the mini boss, we have the level 148 mini boss Mao Wai, which is a wind element, brute race, and medium size. The rare purple material it drops is a snake eye, which will be used for offhand synthesis. It also drops a black flame sword weapon, which can be used by the Crusader and Knight class. 
This new rare purple sword type weapon has dark attribute and can reduce the target's SP. The new Maogwai card grants plus 1000 max HP and 20% max SP. Notably, it has a plus 8 magic attack on lock reward. The old Maogwai card which can be crafted from King Boring will use this art instead. As for the head rare blueprint it drops, we have the Fox Fairy head item which grants plus 3% max HP and plus 5% skill damage reduction. Unlocking this head rare gives plus 6 attack. And lastly for the MVP we have the level 150 Evil Snake Lord, which is of poison element, demon rays, and large size. The rare purple material it drops is a snake eye which is similar to what Maogwai drops. As for the rare purple equipment it drops, we have the Hologren's Hammer which gives a chance to destroy the enemy's equipment. Upgrading it to plus 10 increases the chance of destroying weapon, offhand, armor, and headwear and will be affected by dex and luck attributes. In addition, upgrading it to plus 15 will protect all your equipment from being destroyed. The Evil Snake Lord card is an offhand card which grants 15% max HP and plus 5% skill damage reduction. Notably, it has a plus 12 attack deposit reward and 1% def and mdef unlock reward. As for the head rare blueprint it drops, we have the White Snake Wind Chime Tail item which grants plus 2 int and plus 2% ignore mdef. Refining it to plus 10 is ideal as it will grant a total of plus 4 int, plus 4% ignore mdef, and plus 3% mpen. Unlocking this headwear gives plus 8 attack. Alright, for the next farming map, let's go to Luyang and then enter the portal in the middle. This will lead us to the bottom of Silverfish Lake. For the first monster, we have the level 145 Morlock, which is of water element, fish rays, and medium size. The usual material drops are Fishtail and Dead Branch. Its card is an accessory card which grants plus 5% physical damage reduction and 10% freeze resistance. Notably, unlocking this card grants plus 3 magic attack. As for the headwear blueprint it drops, we have the Deep Sea Touch Head item which increases all attribute by 1 and water damage by 3%. Next, we have the level 150 Sidewinder which is of poison element, brute race, and medium size. The usual material drops are fantasy flower and fly wing. Its card is a weapon card which grants plus 15 attack and a 5% chance to inflict poison to a target for 10 seconds when attacking. As for the headwear blueprint it drops, we have the enchanting kiss mouth item which grants plus 20 attack and a 5% chance to inflict poison to a target for 10 seconds when attacking. Unlocking this headwear gives plus 3 magic attack. Next, we have the level 155 Red Tailed Mermaid, which is of water element, fish rays, and large size. The usual material drops are Earth Crystal and Blue Potion. Its card is an armor card which grants plus 200 max HP and a 15% chance that the attacker will be inflicted with steep status for 3 seconds when receiving damage. Notably, unlocking this card grants plus 3 attack. As for the header blueprint it drops, we have the Sea Oath Back item, which increases skill damage by 4% and reduces SP cost of skills by 10%. Unlocking this headwear gives plus 3 attack. Additionally, there are two boss monsters that you'll find here. For the mini boss, we have the level 154 Lady Silverfish, which is of water element, demi human rays, and medium size. The rare purple material it drops is the Burning Snake Scales. It also drops a new foot gear shackles which increases death and max HP but decreases movement, speed, and flee. In addition, it will give your attacks a 100% chance to inflict enemies with bleed status for 5 seconds. Furthermore, it has a side effect with a new accessory bloody iron ball which increases physical and magic damage reduction by 5%. The Lady Silverfish card is a headwear card which increases magic attack by 5% and reduces the SB cost of skills by 20%. Notably, unlocking this card grants plus 8 attack. As for the headwear blueprint it drops, we have the Sea Soul Tail item, which increases all attributes by 2 points and increases wind, earth, water, and fire damage by 4%. Unlocking this headwear gives plus 6 magic attack. And lastly for the MVP, we have the level 156 Boy Tata, which is a fire element, brute race, and large size. 
Rare purple material it drops is a burning snake skills which is similar with what Lady Silverfish drops. It also drops the new weapon Staff of Bordeaux which reduces SP cost of skills and increases damage to all races when refinement reaches plus 5, plus 10, and plus 15. Its card is an armor card which increases damage to wind and earth element and brute and insect race monsters by 15%. Notably, it has a plus 12 magic attack on lock reward. As for the headwear blueprint it drops, we have the Ancestral Serpent Sword back item which grants plus 5% max HP and reduces neutral damage taken by 1% for every refine level plus 1. Unlocking this headwear gives plus 8 magic attack. Aside from Luyang City and its farming maps, there will also be two new maps opened in Episode 7. And these are Wasteland and Moonlight Cave. This will feature new gameplay wherein you can farm the upgrade materials needed for the 4 job skill tree. We'll talk more about this new daily gameplay in another video so stay tuned for that. To access Wasteland, just go to Flower Street and enter the South Portal. The normal monsters here are just mutated versions of monsters in-game. Aside from upgrade materials needed for a fourth job, these monsters also drop the card of the regular version. For the first monster, we have the Maple Forest which is a mutated version of Wormtail. It is of Earth Element, Plant Race, and Medium Size. The only sellable drops are Great Nature and Wormtail card. Next, we have the Wild Creamy which is a mutated version of Creamy. It is of Wind Element, Insect Race, and Small Size. The only sellable drops are Honey and Creamy card. Next, we have the Wild Man-Eating Plant which is a mutated version of Flora. It is of Earth Element, Plant Race, and Medium Size. The only sellable drop is Flora card. Next, we have the Wild Wrath which is a mutated version of Taro. It is of Dark Element, Brute Race, and Small Size. The only sellable drop is Taro card. And lastly, we have the Wild Cobalt which is a mutated version of Cobalt. It is of Fire Element, Demi Human Race, and Medium Size. The only sellable drops are Flame Heart and Cobalt card. As for the mini boss, we have the level 151 Maple Elf Isma, which is of Earth Element, Plant Race, and Large Size. The rare purple material it drops is the Void Skeleton. It also drops the new dagger type weapon, Magic Dagger Dark Devour, which has a chance to deal double damage when attacking. Refining it to plus 15 will significantly boost the chance to deal double damage to 30%. However, it will reduce your death and M death by 50%. The Maple Elf Isma card is a weapon card which increases attack by 25 and ignore death by 20%. Notably, depositing this card gives plus 1% ignore death while unlocking gives plus 1% death. As for the headwear blueprint it drops, we have the Maple Phantom Head item, which increases Agi by 5, auto attack damage by 2%, and attack speed by 5%. Depositing this headwear gives plus 3 magic attack. And lastly, for the MVP, we have the level 152 Wasteland Lord which is of Dark Element, Demi-Human Race, and Large Size. The rare purple material it drops is the Ice Crystal Glass. It also drops the new book-type weapon Death Node, which gives a 3% chance to trigger a special effect when doing auto-attacks that deal magic damage equivalent to 1000% magic attack and inflict curse effect on all enemies within a 5 meter radius. Refining it to plus 12 will increase the chance of triggering this effect by up to 10%. Its card is a foot cure card which grants 100 death and reduces damage received from medium sized monsters by 30%. Notably, it has a plus 12 attack on lock reward. Depositing this card reduces damage from medium sized monsters by 1%. As for the headwear blueprint it drops, we have the Hat of Wicked Thoughts head item which grants plus 5% ghost attack and additional 1% ghost attack for every refined level plus 1. Depositing this headwear gives plus 4.5 attack. And for the last new map in Episode 7, we have the Moonlight Cave. This can be accessed from Wasteland by entering the South Portal. There are four normal monsters here which again are just mutated versions of regular monsters. They have higher HP, death, and M-death compared to the mobs in Wasteland. 
For the first monster, we have the Glowing Mushroom, which is a mutated version of Spore. It is of poison element, plant race, and medium size. The only sellable drop is Spore card. Next, we have the Glowing Bat, which is a mutated version of Familiar. It is of dark element, brute race, and small size. The only sellable drop is Familiar card. Next, we have the Wildfire, which is a mutated version of Horong. It is a fire element, formless race, and small size. The only sellable drops are Flame Hard and Horong card. And lastly, we have the Forest Light Ladybug, which is a mutated version of Brylight. It is a fire element, insect race, and small size. The only sellable drop is Brylight card, but it also drops a Grisa Leaf. Alright, so far we've explored the city of Luyang and its new farming maps together with a wasteland map coming in episode 7. We also took a look at the new monsters as well as the cards, equipment, and header blueprints they drop. Do take note that exact names may be translated differently once the patch is released in the English servers. Make sure to stay tuned as we'll feature more updates coming in episode 7. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.